Yeah, welcome back. Now, talking about the nine abdominal pelvic bridges. So we said nine abdominal pelvic region. So we said they combined these two words, these two cavities. So which is what? The abdominal cavity. So the abdominal is from the word abdominal. And then they connect it to the word to the pelvic region. Why? Because they are actually continuous. So there's nothing separating them like that of the thoracic and what? An abdominal. Now, if that be the case, they divided this abdominal cavity and this pelvic region, they divided it into nine sections. So, let's demarcate that. One, two, so three, four. Now, from here, we realize that we have what? We have nine sections. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, what's the name of each of these regions? Let's start with this piece. Normally, this five, this region, um, that five is written, is actually what we used to find something called the navel. So, this is the word, the navel. But anatomically, what is the anatomical name of navel? It is called umbilicus. Umbilicus, what? Umbilicus. So, it is the out of what? Of the umbilical cord. So, if you've watched anything like the living before, you will realize that the baby used to have something like a rope right at this junction. So that rope is called umbilical cord. So when they cut it, that remnant of the umbilical cord is going to heal up and it's going to form the navel. And because of that, another one used to call navel the umbilicus because it's a remnant of what? Of the umbilical cord. Now, if that be the case, they turn the name of this region into the umbilical region. Umbilical what? Umbilical region. And now, what next? Shall you see this umbilical region? It's also known as the proper belly. Belly what? Known as the proper belly. If you say, my belly, that's what we used to touch most of the times. Even for layman, they would call this place the stomach. Although as a nurse, we know this is not the stomach. So, layman used to call it the stomach or belly. And, and anatomically, the word belly means gastric. Gas what? Gastric. And take note of these two terms that I'm going to give to you. Whenever you see the word epi in anatomy, it means above. Just like superior. And the word hypo is the opposite, which means below or inferior. Now, if that's the case, if this is our belly, this region is on top of this belly. Anatomically, what would be the name of this region? A region that is above the what? The belly. So, and the word above is what? Epi. So, you bring that. Epi. So it's above what now? It's above the belly. When belly means what? Gastric. So, this region is called the epigastric region, as simple as that. Now, the region below the belly now, you be called what? Hypo means below, so you bring hypo right here. Hypo, and now belly is what? Gastric, so hypogastric region, as simple as that. Now we are left with what? One, four, seven, and three, six, nine. Now we can know that this is the right side and this is the left side. So everything right here will be right something. Right something, right something. And everything right here will be left something. So left something and left something. Now, what's the name of this region? Now, don't forget. We said this is the abdominal pelvic region. It means all these nine regions starts directly under this place where you can't feel this bone anymore. Now, let me ask you a question. This bone is really hard, right? But keep coming down. You realize that it gets softer. And all these regions, they are soft. Because these upper parts are bones. But these lower parts are made up of cartilage. Cartil what? Cartilage. And then they will fall right on top of this place now. The cartilage. So the cartilage what? Cartilage. And anatomically, cartilage means cone draw. Cone what? Cone draw. That is the anatomical name for cartilage. Now, if cartilage is on top of this abdominal region, so if it's on top, then the region below the cartilage will be called what? Now, take a look at that again. It is the cartilage, and then the region is found below the cartilage. What is the meaning of below in anatomy? Hypo. So this place will be the right hypo. Hypo what now? Below the what? Below cartilage. And cartilage means chondro. So it is called the hypochondriac. So hypochondriac region. 
That is a region that is hypo the cartilage. As simple as that. That is below the cartilage. So this one will be the what? The left hypochondriac region. As simple as that. Now, what about this place? This place, this right and this left part, what are they called? Now, we used to use a cheat to remember. And what is that cheat? I'm going to lie. And let me ask you, the word lie starts from what? L. So you put your L right here. Right, L. And now you are going to go to this place. Pick the first three letters. One, two, and three. U and B. So add it to this place. You will get long. But because you want to add region, it will give you right lumbar region. As simple as that. And this one will be the what? The left lumbar region. Now, if that be the case, what is the real meaning of that? Lumbar region, this region is gotten from what? From the vertebra that is located posteriorly to the what? The abdominal cavity that I told you in the last thing. So the point is, because this region is on the either side of the lumbar vertebra, that's why they call it the what? The lumbar region. Now, let's come down here. Let's lie as well. We've picked the first two and, and we've picked the first, second, and the third words instead of letter. So let's pick the next three again. One, two, three. That is I L I. Ili, right? That will give you right words. Ili. And because you want to have the region, it will take arc again. Iliac words. Iliac region. And this one will be the words. The left iliac region. As simple as that. But why is it called the iliac region? Let's leave cheat alone. And let's talk about anatomy strictly. It's called the iliac region because the rim of this pelvic cavity, the superior part, is called the iliac crest. And because this part, I mean, and because this part rather, is lying around it, so that, I mean just within it, very close to it, that's why they call it the what? The iliac region. As simple as that. Now, these are what? Your name abdominal pelvic region. Now, a quick recap. We said this umbilical region. It's called the umbilical region because that is where the umbilical, or the navel, is located. I'm saying the umbilical is the remnant of the umbilical cord. And now, you said this part as well, it's usually called the belly by layman. Layman is someone that has no knowledge of nursing or um, science in this aspect. So, belly means what? Gastric. And when you say epi, epi means above. And when you say hypo, hypo means below. Now, if that be the case, you said the region that will be above the belly, we call it what? The epi gastric region, which means what? Above the belly. So, and one on that will be what? Hypogastric region. And after that, you will have what? You will have the right and the left region. Now, we said because this is the abdominal cavity region, which means the thoracic will be on top. And the thoracic ends in cartilage at this junction. So, this cartilage is also called chondroid anatomy. And because this region falls under this cartilage, we used to call it the what? Hypochondriac region. And this one will be the left hypochondriac region. And because the lumbar vertebra is right at the middle, at the posterior part. And these two sides are on the either side of the lumbar vertebra. That's how we call it the lumbar region. And then the next one is iliac region. So because it is close to the words, to the iliac crest. And that is that about the navy. Now, let's talk about the organs that are found in different parts of this world, of this region. So, stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. Now, let's take a look at the organs found in different abdominal pelvic regions. So, let's start. Read the diagram. Now, this structure is called the GIT, the gastrointestinal tract. Now, I'm going to divide it into nine regions. So, we have our one this way, and then two. So, have this, and then. Now, these are what? Our name of doing every region. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, if that be the case, this structure, 
right here. I mean, um, this region is called the right hypochondriac region, right? We have an organ of the GIT there, an accessory organ called the liver. Now, this junction, this organ is called the liver, which means your liver is in your what? The right hypochondriac region. And then, let's have this epigastric too. This structure right here is called the esophagus. That is where the food passes through. So, you have your esophagus right here as well. Esophagus. And after that, you realize that you have some part of the stomach inside this place. So, you also have the stomach here as well. And now, this liver, it extends to this region, which means you have the liver here as well. And then the food is going to pass into this place called the stomach. And this place in that region is, is in another region entirely. And that is called the left hypochondriac. So it means you have your stomach there as well. And after that, you realize that the head of this liver, the last little brother, is found in this place. So you can also put liver here. And now, behind the stomach, we have another structure right here. And that structure is called the spleen. And after that, the food is going to pass out into what? Into this C-shaped structure. It is called the duodenum. Duodenum what? Duodenum. As simple as that. And after that, the food will pass through the what? Through this small intestine into the main intestine. So this is the jejunum. So the food will pass into this place. So it's going to revolve around all this place. So these intestines majorly are found in the what? Small intestine. The jejunum to be precise. Let me use the jejunum. So the jejunum. Let me use a red marker for that. So jejunum is found majorly in the what? In the umbilical region. So can I use this structure here? I'll tell you the name later. And when the food passes out, out of this place, it's going to arrive in the first part of, this, um, of the large intestine. And that place is called the cecum. See what? The cecum. And then the food will ascend. Ascend means to go upward. So like the Bible says, Jesus ascends. So it goes up. So the food is going to pass upwardly. That's why they call this place the ascending colon. Ascending what? Ascending ascending colon. So colon means large intestine. So it means the part of the large intestine that ascends. And after that, it's going to pass transversely. Which means this structure is the transverse what? The transverse colon. Transverse what? Transverse colon. Now, if that be the case, the next thing is that the food is going to descend, to come down. And in this place, we call the water that? The descending colon. So descending what? Descending colon. And then the food is going to pass into this place. And this place is an S-shaped structure. So you can see that we have S like this. So it is called the sigmoid colon. The sigmoid what? The sigmoid colon. As simple as that. And from there, the remnant of the food will pass into this barrel. So this barrel is called the rectum. Rec what? Rectum. R-E-C-T-U-M. And from there into the other color, and then to the end of species. So that is the passage of food. And using this, you realize that we have different organs. Oh, okay, um, I, 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 I forgot to talk about the structure. This is called the appendix. Appendix. So if you take a look at this diagram, we will have at least one, one organ at different sections, at different regions. Here we have the liver. So that is the right hypochondriac. In the epigastric, we have the esophagus, stomach, the liver, duodenum. So in the left hypochondriac, we have the stomach, the liver, spleen. So we have the ascending colon in the words, um, lumbar, no, the right lumbar. The sending colon in the left, and then we have the transverse colon and jejunum in the what? In the umbilical -like region. So we have the appendix and cecum in the what? In the right iliac. And then here, the pelvic, we have the rectum. We have the sigmoid colon and the what? At the left iliac. Now, we can still add more organs to it. So let's do that little by little. Now, if you check the posterior part of this liver, if you look at the back of the liver, you find some organs there. One of them is the gallbladder. Gallbladder. So, these are ducts. We're talking about that in our biliary tract. So this structure here is called gallbladder. And apart from that, let's bring in the what? The urinary system. To bring in the urinary system, I are going to draw two kidneys right here. So the structure will be here. And another structure will be here as well. And then we have a structure that will carry the urine and drain it into what? Into another structure view. So same thing right here. So you have your bladder right here. And then the urethra 
Download. I hope you can see this. Now, this structure here is called the right kidney. The right kidney. And the one here we call the what? The left kidney. This structure is going to drain urine out of the kidney. It is called the ureter. But because it cuts across a lot of regions, I won't label it. So it's going to drain urine into this pouch here. And this pouch here is called the urinary bladder. Urinary what? Urinary bladder. And after that, it passes into the urethra. Which means the urethra, urinary bladder, and the what? The pelvic region. The epigastric is precise. And that's exactly what the what? The pouch of the urinary system. Let's quickly take a look at this last system, the reproductive system. If we have to continue drawing some other system here, we're talking about the endocrine system, and we're putting um, some kind of gland on top of this place, called the adrenal gland, so and some other part as well. We're talking about the pancreas and this shape of the but the blood is going to be congested. When we get there, we're talking about them one after the other. So, for the reproductive system now, we are going to have the vagina right here, or the female, and then to turn to the what? To the cervix, and then to the uterus. To turn to the uterus, and the uterus will extend its hand through the what? Through a, um, a structure called the fallopian tube. And the fallopian tube is going to aim for something here. That thing is called the ovary. So the ovary is going to release egg into the fallopian tube. So same thing here, we have the ovary here. Ovary. Which means in this region and this region, we have the right ovary, we have the right ovary rather than the left, and the left ovary. And after that, in this region, we have the uterus there. Uterus. So cervix, vagina. So that is that about the words, about the organs in the inner 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 region. You can just rewind the video and start drawing it out if you want to. But really it's not important. What I need from you, from this scene, is just to draw your inner 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 region and identify those organs alone in written, not in diagram. So that's what you have to bring rise, and that is all. So that brings us to the end of this class. So in our next class, we're talking about the anterior cavity. Because we are done with everything or what? Sorry, the anterior cavity better. Because we are done with everything on the anterior cavity now. So let's talk about the posterior cavity now next week. Hi guys.